Hello everyone, I'm Srimanthi and I'm currently working as an ML engineer. Um, I, uh, so there are three main libraries that we often use when we are trying to implement any machine learning algorithms. So these are NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. I have used NumPy and Pandas and Matplotlib previously when I was implementing machine learning from scratch using just Python. And also when I was implementing machine learning using standard libraries like scikit-learn. But um, today I'll be diving deep into the fundamentals of these three libraries and the functions that we use. So first I'll start with NumPy. Okay, so first we'll import NumPy. Next comes, let's, let's talk about a one-dimensional NumPy array. We will talk about NumPy arrays till three dimensions. This is the first dimension, 1D, 2D, and 3D. We'll talk about the axis, which is a very important concept when learning NumPy. And we'll also talk about why we use NumPy arrays in the first place instead of Python libraries. So try to answer this question yourself and check the answer in shorts. I'll just give a hint. So NumPy array is actually save space. They are very, very memory efficient compared to the Python arrays. That is why we often use, I mean, in all the, most of the machine learning algorithms, you will see um, that we use NumPy arrays. Okay, so now, um, so this is a NumPy array. We have one dimensional one, the most simple one. So now comes the axis. So what is the axis? So the axis tells us, the axis argument of NumPy actually tells us which axis to perform the operation along. So here in this case, um, axis actually, like suppose we have x axis, y axis, and z axis. Um, similarly, here also we have similar things, but these axis can be anything um, in like billions, millions, anything. We can have any number of axis. So here, the only axis available is zero because it's like one dimensional array. So the sum, obviously, you can guess it. It will be 10. NP dot sum, one dimensional array. So this will obviously be um, 10. One plus two plus three plus four. Next comes two dimensional array. So I don't know, let's just have this kind of an array. Five, six. So, um, yeah. So here, actually, we have two dimensions, right? So we will have two axes. So here, axis zero means operating along the rows. Um, so what do we mean by that? Let's just give an example. Um, so let's just have some. So the first axis, which is the axis equals zero, operates along the rows. Remember that. So let's do that. 2D. Axis equals zero. So if you can see, so what is what is happening? So we have like the rows have dissolved into one row, all the rows. So this this explains why it's operating along the rows, right? So the rows have dissolved into one row, and the sum are along the columns. Great. Now let's now you can guess what would happen if I do axis equal one. The other axis is obviously one. First axis. So we have six and fifteen. Yeah. 1 plus 2 plus 3, 6, and 4 plus 5 plus 6, 15. Cool. And now if suppose we had this, this is obvious. So np dot sum arr 2d. So that would be the entire entire sum. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. Great. Now the next thing that comes is, let's just have an 3D array. So this will make things a bit more interesting. And we often have 3D arrays where if you remember, we have 3D arrays when we are trying to deal with image data. We have RGB, red, green, yellow, different channels of colors. So that is why we need this. And we mostly need till 3D array. So that should be good enough. Let's have a simple one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then um, seven, sorry. Seven, eight, nine, and then uh, I don't know, ten, eleven, twelve. This one, yeah. So let's print that out. Yeah, this is our 3D array. So after this, what, what can we do? 
let's just calculate the sum so now this is this gets a bit tricky so axis 0 here means the outermost axis what is the outermost axis let's see let's do that and check it out you can you can make a guess here and see if you understand what i'm saying so the outermost axis actually along the depth so what depth do we have here we have a two depth depth equal to right so this is 1 plus 7 2 plus 8 3 plus 9 4 plus 10 5 plus 11 6 plus 12 and axis equal to 1 would be along the rows and axis equal to 2 would be along the columns i hope this is getting clear now always remember this outermost to the innermost so axis equal 1 would be as you can see so the um, the rows have dissolved so we have we had four rows earlier and we now have two rows. So 4 plus 1, 5, 2 plus 7, 2 plus 5, 7, 3 plus 6, 9. That's it. And I hope you understand this one now. 3D. This would be along the columns. So 1 plus 2 plus 3, 4 plus 5 plus 6 here is 15. Then 7 plus 8 plus 9 is 24. 10 plus 11 plus 12 is 33. I hope you're getting this. This is very, very important to understand. If you don't understand this, you will forever be like, what is happening in this with the, with the NumPy arrays and what, what exactly is going on? Okay. So next thing comes is the shape. So shape is basically starts from outermost to the innermost. So the outermost, there's depth is 2, as you know here, as I showed here. The axis 1 is the rows, 2 rows, and then comes the columns. So 3, 2 cross, 2 cross, 3. Great. Now, can you mutate this array? Definitely. So let's just say, let's just call A to B. Um, let's just say, let's just make A a new array. And don't, let's just not go into this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is better. Now, can you mutate the array? Definitely. Let's make this two and let's print out A. There you go. You can mutate the array easily. Um, how can you index the array? Let's just say A is 0, 2 would be 3. If you can understand, 0 is the 0th row. So the first row and the last column, 3. Now, similarly in Python, you can also do this. So this will be the last row and the last column as well. So that's, guess it, 6. Yeah, correct. Okay, now there's one more thing that's very, very important. np.lin space. So what does that mean? So basically, this is the start one. This is the end one and 10. So in steps of 10, so we'll have 10 values between 0 and 1 equally spaced. So if you can understand this, yeah. The last value should be 1. The uh, first value should be 0, what you specify here. And there should be 10 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. As you can see. This is very important when you don't have data or when you're trying to plot the array using NumPy. So then this becomes very useful. Um, so we have A as this. Let's just, um, okay. So let's, let's, okay. Let's just do something different now. We often have to concatenate two different NumPy arrays, right? So what would happen in that case? Let's just say this is A. Let's just say this is B and we want to concatenate them. 4, 5, 6. Right? We want to concatenate these two arrays. So what would that look like? Let's just say we have C. Concatenation is also very, very useful when you're trying to do something different. Like when you're trying to use two, um, two arrays and you have like features separated across two different two different data structures, two different NumPy arrays, and you want to combine them together for training the algorithm. So then it becomes very useful. Guess what it would look like? Yeah, concatenation means just getting everything together. Yeah, this is what is concatenation. And there's one more thing that is often used, like arrange. So arrange would be like, um, suppose you want to get 24 numbers from 0 to 23. So this just generates them. This also is very useful when you are trying to um, use them in the plotting different points. So suppose you have you don't have the x-axis points, you have the y-values, and you know they're equally distributed. So you can just use this to generate 
uh, a sequence of numbers. That's very, very useful. Next thing is the reshape one. Reshape is also very useful. So reshape one is often used when you're trying to do the um, convolutional neural network. I'll come to that very soon. So there, when you're trying to do the final layer, there you have a fully connected layer. So that one is actually flat. You have to reshape everything back into a completely flat layer. It won't have any dimension, just one dimension. Um, it won't have multiple dimensions, just one dimension. So now this multiplication, 2 into 3 into 4, must be 24. So and then this distributes gets distributed in this order. So I hope this was very clear. Um, if you if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. If you want me to cover any other functions as well, please let me know. And I'll try to explain that. I think this should be enough for any kind of machine learning algorithms you are trying um, for NumPy, basically. Uh, I covered it in detail. And um, this, sh this, should, this should get you going good. If you have any doubt, please rewind it and try to understand it. I've explained it in great detail. I hope this helps. Thank you.